Hi folks, Mike Schramke with Larry Stove Sand Equipment. I've got two dealerships in the uh, Nashville, Tennessee area. And uh, it is December 2021, December already. Um, and as they were cleaning this one up and about to put it on a trailer for a delivery in South Carolina, uh, I thought, you know, it'd be a good time is to talk about long-term storage of your tractor. Um, in a lot of, you know, in a lot of areas of the country, you do have the opportunity to use your tractor year round, especially if you're doing snow removal. Here in the South, most folks, uh, not so much, and the tractor may sit for, uh, for several months. And there are some things you can do to make next spring a whole lot easier without surprises and to make your tractor last a very, very long time. Um, I referred to the owner's manual. I know a lot of us don't look at these very often. And uh, they actually have a chapter on uh, long-term storage. So I took some notes and I wanted to make a quick, uh, just a quick little video in telling, in, in, you know, share with you the things that I would do if I was going to uh, store the tractor for, uh, say, you know, more than a month. Um, the first thing, clean it. For a couple of reasons. One, it'll just be a lot more exciting next spring when you uh, roll the barn doors back and your beautiful tractor is sitting there clean, ready to go, but also, Cleaning it, including the important stuff to clean, like the uh, cooling system uh, screens, uh, the radiator itself. A lot of times, you know, you'll take your hand and you'll wipe the screen clean, or you'll bang the screen on the on the ground and get the grass off, but, or you know, use a blower on it. That everybody does that. That's fine. But uh, what you're missing is the the actual uh, radiator fins. You need to take a garden hose and, uh, and from the inside out, spray through the fins, just like you would on your air conditioner at home. You go outside once a year and you clean the fins. It's equally, if not more important, to do on your tractor because the, uh, the dirt that goes in there just gets packed up as, as mud and clay and, and, and the fins don't do any thinning. Um, and all of this is according to the owner's manual. The nuts and bolts of the tractor. Now is an excellent opportunity to go around the tractor and tighten everything. Just tighten them all. Snug them, torque them. There are torque specs in the uh, owner's manual, but you know, common sense, just, just torque them. Um, we mark them that we did in fact torque the most important ones, which are the lug nuts and the uh, loader arm bracing against the bottom of the chassis. Uh, so, you know, it can easily be uh, looked at to see if they've moved at all. But now's an excellent opportunity to go around the entire tractor and snug everything up. The roll bar, uh, you know, if you don't know what this one right here is, that one's a silencer. So after you put the roll bar in, in the up position, uh, this has a jam nut and a regular bolt, um, you know, drive it into the roll bar to keep any vibration from, from driving you crazy. The, uh, the fenders are bolted on. Those are the kind of things that, uh, as you go around, will keep a tractor from becoming, uh, you know, rattly and rickety. Uh, and it's, it's, it's a good time to do it. We've all got a little extra time, maybe not with Christmas coming up, but in general, uh, we're not outside working so much, so now's an excellent opportunity to go around the tractor and snug everything up. Grease all the zerts, and uh, there are bunches of them. As you know, if you read the owner's manual or watch any of my video, the loader zerts get uh, lubricated every 10 hours. The rest of the chassis uh, every 50 hours or so. Uh, you know, and that's, that's important. Uh, a lot of people will do it when they think of it or do it when they change the oil. And really, on, uh, on the loader, it's, it's, you have to. Uh, what will happen if you don't do this every 10 hours is, uh, in time, this, this main pin, which is huge, uh, will seek the path of re least resistance, which this one and a quarter inch pin is going to go against this quarter inch steel and wallow it out. And 
you don't want that, it's an expensive repair. Um, grease everything. And then this is not in the owner's manual, but uh, I think it's common sense. Treat all of the uh, non-painted items on your tractor and implements as if it were a, uh, a firearm that you, you wipe down with an oil cloth before storage. As you go around, there's a lot of places on the tractor that have no paint because they can't have paint. They're moving parts or, you know, like these, these large pins, these bolts. All of these will surface rust. And I'm not saying they're going to fail, but it's, it's certainly going to be unsightly. Uh, one thing that will require uh, oil, uh, lay some heavy, you know, a, a motor oil, machine oil, any kind of oil on these exposed pistons in the front, in the back, uh, here. You know, raise the loader up, lock the loader in place with loader bracing so you don't hurt yourself, and uh, lay a heavy, uh, heavy dose of oil on those. There's no way to paint them because, you know, they're precision moving parts, but to oil them will keep surface rust uh, away. So all the nuts and bolts and all the exposed surfaces that are not painted, just hit them with a little oil cloth, um, just as you would a firearm. Here's something that you, you wouldn't think of, but when I, when I tell you why, you're gonna say, yeah, well, that makes sense. Overinflate the tires. Take them up uh, to, you know, 10, 15 pounds more than operating uh, pressure. Because you're gonna park the tractor and uh, if the tires are at their working level, which is a very low PSI, they're going to get flat spots from where it was parked. And the flat spots will eventually work, them, work their way out, but it's annoying. And on some of the bigger tractors that have radial tires, it's, it's, they might not work themselves out. But uh, pump them up. Pump them up hard. And uh, it'll, it'll eliminate the flat spots for next year. Um, if it's time for uh, fluid changes, if you're the, you know, typical southern owner that uses the tractor, you know, 100 hours a year or whatever, uh, now's the best time to do the, uh, the annual maintenance, the oil changes, the filter changes, things like that. You know, again, when, uh, when March comes around or in, in the south, February, you're, you're going to want to throw the barn door open, turn the key and, and and have fun. You, you know, nobody wants to turn a wrench or do any any repairs or maintenance or anything when it's when it's time to work. Now's the time to do that. Um, hang the clutch. This is something that you should do if your uh, if your tractor is prone to uh, extreme cold weather. Um, you should do it all the time, and if not, you should do it when you store it. Right here, and I, I may do an inset video here if it, if it doesn't show well. All of our tractors have this spring right here. It's either here, or depending on the model, it's up here, but either way, you can figure it out. You swing it in here, you hang it on the uh, chassis. What you just did there is you separated the clutch from the pressure plate. Um, extreme cold weather, the, the uh, moisture that, that does accumulate inside of a transmission will freeze, and the tractor won't move until the, uh, to, you know, it's warm enough to break the, uh, the clutch and the pressure plate loose. But on long-term storage, that same moisture will accumulate uh, and do the same thing. It'll, it'll, uh, it'll rust internally and uh, the clutch and the pressure plate will stick together and they're, they're a nuisance to come unstuck. And, you know, just avoid it by hanging the clutch like that. Um, lower all the, uh, all the implements. And that's common sense. Take all the strain off of the uh, hydraulic system if you're not going to use the tractor. It's, it, it doesn't hurt, you know, I have people ask, does it hurt if the, the loader is left up or, you know, the uh, three-point implement is up and, you know, overnight, couple days, whatever. No, no, doesn't hurt. But um, long-term storage, just give the tractor a rest. It's earned it and lower everything. This one I... I, I I agree with the owner's manual to some degree and then disagree to some degree. It says uh, remove the battery and store it in a warm climate. Um, yeah, maybe if the tractor battery is older, uh, yeah, you want to try to limp it along. Uh, but a good fresh battery uh, shouldn't be prone to that. What I might do though is I might unhook 
the uh, one of the leads, a positive or negative lead to the battery, just to make sure if there's even the most minuscule drain on some electronic component on the tractor that you 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 know have a, a fully charged battery when it's time to go. So I would do that. I don't know that I'd actually remove it and walk it in the house. That sounds like overkill to me. Um, if the tractor's gonna be stored very long term, and I'm not talking for the winter, uh, I'm talking uh, if if it's a, a year, if you're, you know, in this part of Tennessee, we have a lot of, uh, we have a lot of soldiers. If you're deployed, if the tractor's going to sit, I would uh, drain and refill the uh, coolant system um, to make sure that, the, you know, there's no, uh, nastiness in there that'll that'll you know start to rust the internal components i'd probably if it was a year i'd probably drain the entire coolant system and re, and replace it with a hundred percent coolant instead of the 50 50 mix that you run it with if the tractor is a cab then as part of a cab it has air conditioning and here's one thing on the battery that would differentiate uh from a from a rop unit the uh, the air conditioner needs to be lubricated and the, um, the the stuff that everybody still calls Freon, but it's not. The gas, the cooling gas that's in the uh, system includes a lot of lubricants that all of the uh, the O-rings, the seals, and the compressor itself need uh, to stay you know functional. So uh, the, the book specifically says if you have a cab tractor to run it with the air conditioning on at least once a month, and I, I couldn't agree more. You wouldn't want an air conditioner failure just because an O-ring dry rotted. Um, you know, 89 cent O-ring that we're going to charge a whole bunch to, uh, you know, to find and to uh, to replace. So uh, do run the air conditioner for, for a good amount, you know, 15 minutes or so once a month. And then this one, I it's in the book, and I think this is another smart one. Attach a tag. Hang a tag to the steering wheel reminding you of the stuff that you did and the stuff that needs to be done before you turn the key. For example, uh, rechecking the inflation of the tires because as you remember, you pump them all the way up, way past their operating pressure. So now's the time to, uh, to balance them out, bring them back to operating pressure. So uh, a tag like that and any reminders that uh, you may need to uh, set for yourself like um, I didn't uh, change the hydraulic filter, but I did change the oil. You know, just, just make yourself notes and, and, and certainly hang a tag on it, and especially uh, about the tire pressure. And, and the tire pressure, as I said, is very important. Kind of do the same thing to your implements. You know, this is a brand new Titan rotary cutter. And um, so we have just serviced it. I know that the, the, uh, the, the lubricant is, is proper. Uh, we've we've touched up any nicks in the paint, things like that. But now it's time to do it. Um, you know, we all see rotary cutters that that wear out, and what wears out that the the body itself, the decking wears out, and it's usually because of rust. Um, debris gets in the corners, and debris uh, is wet, and eventually it rusts through, and that's usually what leads to the demise of a of an implement like this. So. Now's the time to clean it real good, pressure wash it up, and uh, take some touch-up paint. You know, get a close color. I'll get you an exact color if you want to come here, but get a close color and uh, touch all the stuff up. And, and, you know, these things will last very, very long. You know, you'll get 15, 20 years out of a, uh, out of a rotary cutter that uh, is maintained properly. And that's, um, that's about it. If you have, oh, one more thing. It's not in the book, and I'm, I'm surprised it's not. Um, but you need to know if the diesel fuel that you put in the tank is treated for winter. Even in an in a upper southern section of the country like this, we do get, um, we do get a, a week, it seems, every year that it's 10 degrees. And uh, if the diesel fuel is not treated, it will freeze, and it's not like it freezes in the tank. It's much worse than that. It freezes in the injectors. It freezes in the in the uh, uh, the filter. It freezes in all the points that uh, will keep you from starting the tractor. And uh, I can tell you that defrost or you know warming up an entire engine without actually running it is is no small feat. 
you either have to drag the thing inside in a heated garage and, and wait a couple days, or you know, we've got this blast torpedo furnace that we can we can just just you know practically torch the side of the tractor, but even that takes several hours. Uh, so what you need to do is uh, if if you're confident in the place that you buy your fuel, if you buy it like at a co-op or something, they actually know. I mean, I, I wouldn't say go into the Petro Mart. They're gonna the, the cashier sitting behind the desk knows. So when in doubt. Uh, go to AutoZone or wherever and buy uh, diesel anti-ice treatment and throw a shot glass full into the tank and you're not done yet because all it's doing now is your tank won't freeze. Uh, you got to run the tractor. So run the tractor for 10 minutes to get it through the entire fuel injection system. Uh, and all the filters, everything, you know, everything will have touched the uh, de-icer and it will not ice. Uh, and, and I should have let off with that because I think right behind... Uh, Cleaning and greasing um, is that's right up there. So uh, we we know our when you get a tractor from me, it has been uh, winter treated. The fuel has so the fuel that was in the tank it won't freeze. But next time you fill it up, you know you need to know. So uh, I would buy uh, some diesel treatment, and just throw a shot glass full in there. Um, that's it. If you have any questions, uh, the owner's manual will answer many of them. But we don't mind calls at all. Uh, people call us all the time, and uh, whether I sold you a tractor or not, I, I'm, you know, we're happy to answer questions. So uh, these things will last a very, very long time. And they'll kind of last a very long time whether you take meticulous care of it or not. But if you take care of it, if you keep it from, uh, you know, surface rust, and if you keep it heavily greased and, and you know, keep it clean and shiny and the radiator clean, these will last for generations. Um, so do that. And if you have any questions, call us or email us. My name's Mike Schramke. You can reach uh, both my stores at 615-956-0334, 956-0334, 615 area code. Uh, you can Email us at sales at lsetractor.com, sales at lse, like Larry Stoltz and Equipment, tractor.com, or service at lsetractor.com. Um, or you can send it to either one and we'll, we'll direct it to go to the right place. But ask questions and uh, thanks for watching my video.